In today's video, I'm going to show you our entire solar setup for off-grid living in our van. Welcome to Freely Roaming. My name is Dan. My family of five and I have been traveling full-time around the world in our home on wheels since 2008. We've driven across more than 30 countries on four continents while sharing our adventures as Molly Mish. You can find our travel vlog at youtube.com slash Molly Mish. We created this channel to share with you everything we've learned since the beginning about this nomadic overland traveling lifestyle. Subscribe for new uploads every week. In today's video, I want to show you guys an overview of our entire solar setup in our off-grid camper van. A lot of you are here because you watch my DIY lithium iron phosphate battery. What's just as important as to having enough capacity in your battery bank is the ability to recharge them. If you plan on living off grid like we do most of the time, you're going to want a reliable way to be able to top off that battery wherever you go. And the way we do that in our van is one of several ways. The primary one of which is through solar power. I'm going to briefly go over exactly what we have and how we use our solar system and a little bit of tips and tricks on how you can maximize your investment as you put money into a solar system in your camper van. So on the roof of our van, we have two 180 watt solar panels. They're wired in series to give me about 44 volts of open circuit voltage. And that comes down through a wire into a Victron charge controller that's rated for 30 amps. On a sunny day like today, we can easily reach a full charge with just those 360 watts of solar on the roof. Our DIY lithium iron phosphate battery has 280 amp hours. And on the average, we use about somewhere between 60 to 120 amp hours. And the way that I like to size my battery bank, as well as my solar panels, is I like to use a three to one rule. Meaning I wanna have three times as many solar watts as I do my daily consumption. So 360 watts on the roof gives me exactly three to one if I'm consuming on the high end of my average, which is 120 amp hours a day. And the amount of battery storage capacity is 280 amp hours. So that's also within the range of three to one when it comes to my daily average use between 60 and 120. About 90, 95 amp hours is a third of my entire battery bank's capacity. The three to one rule that I came up with came from just years and years of using solar power and using off-grid batteries to supply my lifestyle. What I found is having three watts on the roof to one amp hour consumed is just about enough to top off my battery throughout the entire year, whether it be summer when it's sunny all the time or in the dead of winter when it's really difficult to get some sunlight. In fact, in the summer on a day like today, I'm gonna to be charged up within a few hours of the sun rising. But in the winter time, it may take me the entire day to get to a full charge. And if it's really overcast and if it's raining, I may not actually get fully charged. And that's where the three to one battery capacity comes from. Having three times as much battery capacity as I do my average daily consumption, I can last three full days. And that's without actively conserving my power to know that by the end of that third day, hopefully the sun will come out and start to recharge my batteries again. Depending on the latitude on Earth where you're traveling or where you're living, the amount of solar you're going to get throughout the day is going to vary. The closer to the equator you are, the higher the sun is going to be over your head. And if you're traveling further north or further south towards the poles, the sun is going to be closer and closer to the horizon. When you're completely inside the Arctic Circle, in the summertime, you may have sun all day long, but that's gonna be really, really low on the horizon, which means that our 360 watts is not gonna be producing as much power on an hourly basis. So to help with that, we've also made our solar panels on the roof being able to tilt. It's a DIY setup using extruded L aluminum angles. With a simple stainless bolt and wing nut, I can undo two of the corners, push it up to the desired angle, and insert my additional extruded aluminum angles as support legs to have them tilt in any angle that I want. That really helps in the winter time when the sun is low on the horizon or if you're traveling further north in latitude. And the southern latitude basically works the same way. Instead of tilting to the south, you just be tilting to the north. What's nice in our van is that you basically, you just reorient the way you're parking so that the angle of the tilt is always facing where the sun is. In addition to our 360 watts of solar on the roof, we also carry 200 watts of portable solar that we can deploy on the ground. 
For years and years, we carried two 50-watt rigid solar panels set up as a DIY suitcase and would deploy that and put it on the ground whenever we needed to. Over time, one of those 50-watt panels has failed. Recently, I just upgraded those panels. Instead of having two 50-watt rigid panels, I purchased four 50-watt semi-flexible panels. My experience with semi-flexible panels is that if you permanently mount them on the roof without any cooling underneath, they tend to fail within a few weeks of installation. But in a situation where you're using it as a portable setup and it's not gonna be used full time, and in fact, with 360 watts on the roof, we're probably rarely going to use these 200 watts of semi-flexibles that I've upgraded them to. In this use case, it's perfectly fine. I have had semi-flexible panels fail on me in the past, and that's because I decided to permanently mount them on the roof of our previous camper. What's nice about having these portable panels is that in a really, really hot day, even in the summertime, you can park your vehicle in the shade and take your panels out into the sun and just run a big, long, heavy gauge wire back to your van to minimize voltage loss, but you can still get solar charge and stay cool in the van. And in the winter time, or when it's overcast and rainy, you can get those panels out just to get some additional charge for your batteries. The way that I've got those set up is that they go into a separate 20 amp charge controller, also made by Victron. The way to select your charge controllers, you wanna make sure your charge controller can handle about 20% more than the maximum rated capacity of your solar panels. A 100 watt solar panel will output approximately seven to eight amps of power that can go into your battery. So with a 200 watt portable system, I can expect 15 to 16 amps of maximum output on a really, really sunny day with direct light into the solar panels. So a 20 amp charge controller is perfect for that. It may be problematic, depending on the brand of charge controller and solar panels that you're using, to have multiple systems going into the same battery bank. They may be charging using different technologies. For example, PWM charger versus an MPPT charger the different charge controllers when connected to the same circuit together, it may sense each other's voltage and get a false reading of the status of your battery. To resolve that, that is why I use Victron Smart Solar charge controllers for both of my systems. What's cool about the Victron setup is that you can use Bluetooth to network the two charge controllers together. So the two charge controllers essentially work as one. It doesn't matter if one system is running in parallel and one system is running in series, both in parallel, both in series. Each of the charge controller can read the incoming solar input from each solar array and provide the proper voltage and amperage that goes into your battery together. It works in sync together. You don't have to have any other hardware to network them. All you have to do is create a Bluetooth network host on one of the controllers and ask the other controller to join. And they automatically figure out which one is the master, which one is the slave, and they work together in synchronizing the charge. The master charge controller will be used as the primary source to sense the voltage, and the slave charge controller will ignore its voltage readings and work together with the master. If you want the readings to be even more accurate, if you use a Victron shunt or a Victron battery sense, those readings are gonna be reading directly and closest to the actual terminals of the battery. That's gonna give you an even better reading for your charge controllers to go by. So here are the four devices I have on my Victron network. The first one is the shunt. So by looking at the shunt, you will see that I am at 100% charge. You can look at the history. I got fully charged about an hour ago. And let's go back. I'm gonna go to this. This is my 30 amp. This is my primary charge controller. And to connect to it, you will see that since I'm fully charged, this is uh, 89, 90 watts. This is just some, the fridge is on right now. I think the inverter is on. So these are just basically powering the, uh, the loads that are uh, in the van. So if I go to history, you will see today, I had a 1.69 kilowatt hour yield and these last few days, I hover anywhere between one kilowatt hour or 960 kilowatt hour. The highest I've had was uh, 1.94. This is just after a overcast, rainy day where I didn't fully charge. But every day after that, I have fully charged. And you can see that I hover between one kilowatt hour to about 1.7 kilowatt hour. And then this is my secondary, this is my 20 amp hour charge controller that I use for the portable panels. And as you can see, I don't use this very much. 
if you scroll back for the last 30 days of use, there's only one day where I charged it for 200 watt hours 23 days ago. So as you can tell by going here, going back to my 30 amp power charge controller, it is on a network. You can tell that by this icon here on the upper right. And if you click on that, it tells you what it is being networked for. So this product is configured for smart networking and is receiving data, battery voltage, battery temperature, and battery current. Voltage and temperature, I'm getting that from my Victron battery sense, which is this guy right here. So this guy is placed right at basically the terminal of the lithium iron phosphate batteries. So it's getting the most accurate reading possible. If you click on that, it says this device is transmitting data to the network for all the other devices. So it's sending battery voltage and battery temperature to my charge controllers. And this is how my two charge controllers work together in tandem. So it knows what the actual battery voltage is and it won't let the incoming solar voltage affect what it needs to do. So here you see the same thing, battery voltage, battery temperature. Right now this one doesn't have any panels connected, but if both have panels connected, you will see another line right here on the list of uh, data. Uh, actually right here, this one shows it because this one is getting power. This one shows total network, total power, 97 watts, but that's just this one. So if I was pulling in another, let's say 50 watts from the other one, it'll show a network total power of what I'm getting in this one as well as the other one. And setting up the network is pretty easy. You just go to settings by clicking on this gear over here, click on VE Smart Networking. So I'm now connected to this network that I created and you can use any of these devices that supports the VE Smart Networking as the host of a network. So if I were to leave a network, I can join any other network. So let's see, I'll just show you. If I leave this network, I can either create a network or join an existing network. So if I want to create my own, I can create a name for it. Or if I want to join an existing, I click on it, it'll find it, and I just click OK. And then automatically, this will join the network and it will either provide data to the network or receive data from the network based on what it needs. There's really nothing else to it but that to set up your network. So that's it. That's the basic overview of my solar systems and my DIY camper van. I hope that was helpful to you guys. There will be several follow-up videos that show you the specifics of how each of these components work, how I've installed them and what they cost, and how you can build your own for your own camper van. Thanks as always for watching. Thanks for all of you guys that support us on Patreon. We really appreciate it. I'll see you guys in the next one.